Crisis management is a topic that's often in the news, but it's also something businesses need to plan. A crisis can strike any time without warning and quickly spiral out of control if it's not managed properly. A well-run crisis management project can help mitigate the damage caused by a crisis and even help your business come out of the other side stronger than before. In any business, there will always be the potential for a crisis to occur. Whether it's a natural disaster, a data breach, or a product recall, crises can majorly impact operations and the bottom line. That's why it's so important for businesses to have a plan in place for how to manage a crisis project. The first step is to create a crisis management team. This team should be composed of key stakeholders from various departments within the company. The team should meet regularly to discuss possible risks and brainstorm solutions. Once a crisis occurs, the team must move quickly to contain the damage. This may involve communicating with the media, customers, and other affected parties. The goal is to provide accurate information and minimize the negative impact of the crisis. The team will also need to develop a plan to fix the problem that caused the crisis. This could involve anything from redesigning a product to changing company policies. Whatever the solution, it's important to implement it as quickly as possible to minimize the long-term effects of the crisis. By following these steps, businesses can be better prepared to handle a crisis. Having a plan in place can help contain the damage and get your operations back up and running as quickly as possible. In his book, A Practical Approach to Crisis Project Management, author and crisis management expert George Fink outlines a four-stage life cycle that all crises go through. These stages are 1. Prevention This is the stage where organizations take steps to prevent crises from occurring in the first place. This might include things like risk assessments, vulnerability analysis, and developing contingency plans. 2. Detection and Assessment This is where a potential crisis is identified and assessed for severity. This might involve monitoring media reports, social media, or other early warning indicators. 3. Response This is the stage where organizations take action to address the crisis. This might involve activating contingency plans, deploying resources, and communicating with stakeholders. 4. Recovery This is the stage where organizations work to return to normal operations after the crisis has passed. This might involve things like debriefing, lessons learned, and evaluation. By taking steps to prevent crises from occurring, identifying them early when they do occur, and having a plan for how to respond, organizations can minimize the negative impact of crises on their operations. During each of the four stages, it is important to clearly understand the difference between what you want to achieve and how you will achieve it. In other words, your goal and the resulting strategy. Each stage will most often incorporate a different goal and, therefore, a different strategy. It is important to have a clear goal in mind before you start a strategy. What is your immediate concern? Are these strategies being developed to tell your story? Otherwise, you will likely end up wandering off course. It should be focused and concise, and it should make it clear to everyone involved what their role is in helping you reach your goal. A good strategy will also help to keep everyone motivated and on track when things get tough. After all, if everyone knows the goal and how their actions fit the bigger picture, they are more likely to stay committed to achieving it. When a crisis hits, it can be difficult to know who is in charge and who is supposed to do what. In large organizations, multiple people with different roles and responsibilities may need to coordinate their efforts. And in smaller organizations, the person in charge may not have a clear plan or may not be prepared to handle the situation. One way to ensure everyone knows their role in a crisis is to create a crisis management plan. This plan should identify who is in charge of each aspect of the response and their responsibilities. It should also include contact information for all key personnel so that everyone can be reached quickly if necessary. 
The plan should be reviewed and updated regularly, and all staff should be trained to know what to do during a crisis. By having a plan in place, you can ensure that everyone knows their role and that the response is coordinated and effective. When a crisis hits, it can feel like everything is spinning out of control. But with a few practical steps, it is possible to get a handle on the situation and start making progress. The first step is to define what needs to be done. This may seem obvious, but it can be easy to lose sight of the big picture in the midst of a crisis. What are the most important things that need to be accomplished? What are the priorities? Once the priorities are clear, it's time to start developing a system for action management. This means creating a way to track who is responsible for each task, what the deadlines are, and what the status of each task is. Many software programs can help with this or be as simple as using a spreadsheet, but action management is not only about keeping track of tasks. It's also about making sure that tasks are getting done. This means regular check-ins with team members and follow-up if tasks are not completed. With a clear understanding of what needs to be done and a system for action management, it will be much easier to make progress during a crisis. In any crisis, one of the first things that must be done is to understand who is doing what. This requires creating a map of all the key players and their roles. The map should include not just the obvious responders, such as the police and fire services, but also all the other organizations that might have a role to play, such as utility companies, local businesses, voluntary organizations, and so on. Once you understand who is doing what, you can start to think about how they can best work together. This might involve establishing formal agreements between organizations or ensuring everyone knows each other's capabilities and limitations. In some cases, creating new organizations or teams may also be necessary to deal with the crisis. For example, if a major incident involves multiple casualties, a specialized medical team might be set up to deal with the injured. Whatever approach is taken, there must be good communication between all the different organizations and individuals involved. This will help to ensure that everyone is working towards the same objectives and that no one is duplicating effort. This is excerpt of the article, A Practical Approach to Crisis Project Management, which can be found at business901.com.